what's up guys what's going on welcome back to kitchen tonic welcome back to vidmas welcome back to foodmas welcome back to another brand new video on kitchen tonic in this video here today we're going to be making a nice guyanese classic now i've showed you guys a tennis roll video that wasn't part of my vidmas series here and i've also showed you guys how to make a vegetarian style pepper pot Guyanese vegetarian style pepper butt. So today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys something that actually complements that pepper pot really well. And that is the good old bread guys, plat bread that is. And without further delay, let's jump right into these ingredients. For this recipe, we're gonna be need, we're gonna be needing a quarter cup brown sugar, one and a quarter cups of water. That's 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's very important because that's the temperature that's needed in order to activate our yeast. We're gonna use a quarter teaspoon of salt as well as one tablespoon of dry active yeast. Over here, we also have a quarter cup of butter, preferably room temperature. We're also gonna be needing one tablespoon of butter that we're gonna be use for basting this bread when we finish. And we're also gonna be using three and a quarter cups of all purpose flour for this bread here as well. So that's all the rest, the ingredients we're going to be needing for this recipe here today. Without further delay, let's get to activating our yeast. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and activate our yeast. And like I mentioned before, we need this water to be at a specific temperature, which is about 105 to 110 degrees Celsius in order for us to activate our yeast here. The sugar also helps with the activation process. So what we're going to do pour our sugar into our water here and try to dissolve it as much as you can. All right guys, after you dissolve your sugar sufficiently, it won't all dissolve right now because there's not enough surface area and not enough water in there to completely dissolve this sugar for right now. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my yeast into this bowl here as well. And just give it a quick mix. All right guys, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna place a regular paper towel over this bowl here, and I'm gonna leave this yeast in a nice warm place in order for it to bloom, and that should take about eight to 10 minutes. So set your yeast aside for now, and let's work on the butter for this bread. All right guys, so while we wait for our yeast to bloom or to activate, we're gonna work on this dough here partially because we also need our yeast mixture for this bread here. But for now, we're gonna add our salt into our flour, just like that. I'm just gonna be using my hands to mix this recipe here, guys. But if you have a fork or whatever you wanna use, that's totally up to you. I'm also gonna go ahead and add my butter into this flour here as well. And like I said, this is a quarter cup of butter that I'm gonna be using here for this recipe. And I'm just gonna incorporate this butter here into my flour. Okay, and after you've mixed your butter here, it's gonna have kind of a crumbly kind of look to your mixture here. And now I'm gonna make a, a well or a hole in the middle of my flour here. And that's it for now. What, I'm, what we're gonna do now, we're waiting for our yeast to activate. And we're just gonna pour that yeast mixture directly in the middle here. Then we're gonna get ball rolling once again. But for now, we're gonna take a break here while we wait for our yeast to activate. Should only be about another eight or seven more minutes. All right, guys, so after about 10 minutes, you're expecting your yeast to be nice and activated just like this, or double in size. This is what we're gonna be looking for in order to know that your yeast has, uh, has been activated. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to slowly pour this yeast mixture into the middle. And we're going to start combining these two ingredients, this dry and wet ingredient. Okay guys, so after you've fairly combined your ingredients, you're going to have a nice soft, not too proper looking dough here. But what we're going to do now, we're going to transfer our dough onto our floured surface, which is the surface that my bowl is currently sitting on. I'm gonna sprinkle some flour on my surface here, then we're gonna remove our dough from this bowl, place it on our work surface, and then we're gonna continue kneading for about five minutes. All right, guys, so I'm, a, I'm about to knead this dough for about five minutes until it's in a nice smooth bowl. 
you also want to make sure that your fingers are clean so that you don't have anything sticking to your fingers or anything like that so go ahead and wash off your hands even though you're gonna be touching the floor once again you want to make sure that you're you don't want any sticky dough on your finger because it's gonna affect the way that you actually need this dough here so I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands off and we're gonna need this dough for about five minutes until it's in a nice smooth ball All right guys, so after about five minutes of kneading, I went ahead and placed some oil or some grease in my container here. And I'm just gonna take my dough ball, place it in the middle there. I'm just gonna place some oil on the top of my dough here as well. And what I'm gonna do now, I went ahead and wet a piece of paper towel and I'm just gonna place this over my container just like this. Okay guys, so 45 minutes, you have to let this sit and let it rise until it's double in size. 45 minutes to an hour. So I'll check back in with you then. All right guys, so here we are. It's been 45 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes and here we have our finished product. Voila. As you can see here, my dough has sufficiently risen and is now double in size. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna punch down the middle of this dough and let the dough fall back down once more just like that you're gonna let the dough fall back down and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna flour my surface here and I'm gonna remove the dough from this bowl here and then I'm gonna knead this dough again for about two minutes and then we're gonna go from there all right guys so here I have my nice soft dough I'm gonna go ahead and knead again for about two minutes Okay guys, so after about kneading for about a minute and a half to two minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and pinch off about a two inch piece of my dough here. And we're just gonna set it aside for later purposes. What I'm gonna go ahead and do now, I'm gonna divide my dough here into three equal parts. All right guys, you wanna divide your dough into three equal parts just like that. And now we're gonna roll this dough or these three equal parts into some long logs or about uh, one and a half feet long. I'll show you what I mean by that. You guys gonna take your dough and we're just gonna roll it into an oval shape. If you want, you can also go ahead and hold your dough this way and just roll this way as well. All right, guys, so after you've made about three equal logs here, we're gonna now go ahead and plait these logs just as you're gonna be plaiting like a hair. So we're gonna do some braiding of the bread. All right guys, this is what we have here so far. Don't mind my sloppy braiding job or plaiting job here, but this is what basically what we're gonna be doing. And for now, we're gonna roll this little piece, that, this little piece of dough that we bro broke off earlier. We're gonna roll this into a long strip and then we're gonna place it down the middle of our plat bread here. Let's get right into that. All right guys, so I went ahead and made my strip out of my dough. And then we're just going to place this on the top of the bread, just like this. What I'm going to go ahead and do now, I already have my baking pan already greased up. I'm going to transfer my plat bread here into my baking pan. All right, guys, and there we have it. So from here on out, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for about 30 minutes until it rises and double in size once again. And then I'm gonna place it in the oven at 350 degrees to bake 
for about 20 to 25 minutes so I'll be back with the final product for you guys to see how everything comes together all right guys so it's been 30 minutes and as you can see here my bread has risen once again I know I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 350 degrees my oven is already preheated and we're gonna bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes I'll be back with the final product We wish you a Merry Christmas We wish you a Merry Christmas We wish